Okay, uh, so thank you to uh, Nick Jarbo, Nick uh, Swanson Heisel for their excellent presentations on Monday and Tuesday of this week. Both of those are up on YouTube channel. So you can go to the YouTube channel at earthref.org um, slash events slash magic slash 2020 and click on the YouTube um, uh, link there to see the videos that uh, have been put up from Monday and Tuesday this week. And also there's one that's similar to Nick Swans and Heisel's about DMAG GUI, which goes, does the similar thing for Telia GUI. So if you're interested in other uh, of our GUIs, uh, graphical user interfaces, then um, go uh, check out that website. Um, so the goals of this hour are, I did start recording, didn't I? Yeah, you have. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the goals of this hour are, um, first, uh, we're going to go deeper into PMAC Pi. Um, I'm going to introduce you to the basic modules. Uh, the nice thing about this is that um, we don't have to install anything on your own computer, and it should all work. So I would like to invite you all to go to this website, Jupiter Hub, Jupiter, note the spelling, Jupiter Hub. Dot earthref.org. Nick Swans and Heisel put in a link into the chat page. So if you go there, you uh, should um, uh, log in to Earthref and, um, and get a page like this. It probably will just say PMAG setup um, for now. So if you could raise your hands once you're at this site. Okay, people are getting there. If you're having trouble, just say something in the, um, Okay, so most people are there. Uh, Brendan, did you have trouble? Courtney, are you having trouble? Anybody who's having trouble, you, you, okay. Um, uh, Nick Jarbo, could you figure out how to uh, help uh, Deepa? On a private chat, maybe? Okay. Uh, so, once you're on this website, jupiterhub.earthref.org, uh, click on PMAG Pi Setup, this, this link here. And what that does is it takes you to a page, which is our first Jupyter Notebook. This is a very simple one. All it does is set up your environment so that we can use PMAG Pi on this website. So just a few things about Jupyter Notebooks that you'll need to know. First of all, um, they're, they're composed of two different kinds of cells. This is uh, what's called a markdown cell. It's for typesetting. And if I double click on it, I can see how it was built. And then if I want to render it, I click on Run. So if everybody could just try that. Um, that shows you how to render a markdown code. Then we get to this little code block. You can see here, it tells you what the flavor of the cell is. So this said markdown up here, and um, this one says code. If I click on this, it executes that uh, code block, which will install PMEGPI on your um, space on this server. So if everybody could do that, um, and then 
click on this cell. And I hope this does not crash the system. What it's doing is it's going to GitHub, which is where PMEGPI is hosted. Um, and it installs um, the software and these notebooks. So once you're done with that, you get a little number up here when it's done. Um, then we'll go to um, go under file. Up here, click open. And it gives you this page. Now you should have a folder that's called examples. And we click on that. Um, and you should see something like this. Now, could people raise their hands uh, when they get this far? And if you're having trouble, put your hand down. Okay, so Hana, you're having trouble? Wape? Kame, are you having troubles? Your hand is not up. <clears throat> so you don't see the examples folder even after you clicked on, you, you ran the setup. You ran setup.py, Courtney? Yes. And you still don't see this examples? No. I don't know what to do about that. Maybe Nick Jarbo, you could figure that out. I don't know. OK. So when you see this examples folder, open it up. And then there's a whole bunch of note. These are called Jupyter Notebooks, the IPYNB. It stands for IPython Notebook. And we've made a whole bunch of these. Um, but I'm going to start uh, you out on this Magic Workshop demo one. So if you could all click on that, um, <clears throat> we get to our uh, Peliomag code block the first, our first uh, PMAC Pi notebook. So I want to tell you a little bit about PMAC Pi. As Nick uh, Swanson Heisel mentioned yesterday, it's a long-term project. It started around in the early 2000s when I translated my Fortran code into something called PMAC, the Pi from PMAC. And in there, there's a, a lot of functions command line um, interface programs that you run from the command line and um, uh, that call functions that are in, um, in the PMAGPI package. We're not gonna do the command line stuff. Um, we're going to do it all through a notebook. So Nick Swans and Heisel um, turned me on to these notebooks and started this package, IPMAG, which is designed specifically for calling PMAGPI functions from within a notebook. PMAGPLOTLIB is, is a lot of uh, plotting functions that we'll call today. And PMAG has um, some calculation functions. So I'm, I'm just, in this um, um, tutorial, I've just picked out three examples that spread through a lot of paleomagnetism that is not uh, covered by, um, um, is not uh, in the graphical user interfaces. So this is deeper. Okay, so if you must first click on this code block that I'm highlighting here. It's importing all the functions that we'll need. So um, I'm not going to go into Python today, but um, these are a bunch of Python um, uh, help files like the plotting functions and NumPy is a numerical Python and Pandas is a data wrangling uh, package. Um, and so now if you would, uh, 
click on the second one, that sets up your directory, except it's already set up, so nothing will happen when you do that. So what we're gonna do is there's three exercises, um, as this says. The first exercise looks at a typical directional data set. I just picked one that happened to be lying around um, and plotting um, equal area nets, um, uh, maps of VGPs, base maps, stuff that uh, most of us like to put into our papers. Example two, the exercise two shows how to get, uh, it's a geomagnetic theme. And exercise three is, um, uh, shows off how we can use magic to, uh, to store non-magnetic data and plot them along with our data. Um, so let's start, um, oh, uh, one thing I wanted to tell you is if you encounter a problem in uh, PMAGPI, you go to this website that Nick Swanson-Heisel showed you uh, yesterday. Um, so you go to, um, the easiest way to get there is to go to github.com slash pmagpie and then click on pmagpie and then click on issues and if you have a problem you just click on new issue and explain what happened what you'd like to see happen etc and then uh, one of us on the pmag uh, pie team will get to it and address it and make it work for you um, okay, uh, so, so now I'm going to go through the notebook. The first exercise is um, this, I'm going to use the data of Bihar et al, uh, 2019. It was a study, we drilled a bunch of lava flows in the Golan Heights, and, um, and it was published in this DOI here that I'm highlighting. So if you go to the MAGIC website, you can search for Bihar, and you should come up with this study. So there's two things here. One is the DOI, and one is the contribution link, so 16676. So there's two ways of finding a particular data set, these two numbers. Um, First, we're going to use the um, magic ID number, which was this 16676. Download the data from magic into this, uh, onto this server that you're using now, um, and, um, and use a pmagpy function called download magic uh, to unpack it into the, um, the data files that are required for PMACPI. Um, and uh, Nick uh, John, uh, Jarbo ex described some of those on Monday, most of those on Monday. So one thing that you should know is that any PMACPI program has a doc string, or most of them do. The ones that don't, we're adding slowly, but they're deep down inside. You probably will never encounter them. So if you want to know how to use this thing, download magic from ID, um, you say help, and then IPMag, which is the module that contains this function, and then the function name. And it gives you help on how to use it. So in this case, it's very simple. We just have to put in the contribution ID here, so that number 166, um, uh, 16676 goes in there, and that's we'll download that, that contribution. So here <clears throat> I set um, a variable named um, dir underscore path, which is the directory path, and you can see that uh, here there are three, um, three. Uh, directories or files, fi uh, folders, and that's where these data will go, is into this directory. 
this is the magic ID I just told you about. I'm making a string here called magic contribution underscore that number on uh, dot text, which is the name of the file that will be downloaded. IPMag download magic from ID that that will download the contribution. And this function here, rename OS operating system dot rename will take that file and move it into the directory uh, ex ex exercise one um, and um, example one. And then this function here, ipmag.downloadmagic, takes that file and unpacks it into the individual um, individual um, uh, files required by magic. So this has got um, a contribution file. It's got a bunch of tables that you can look at with Excel if you want to. Uh, they're like what Nick Jarbo was, was preparing on Monday. You can do the same thing if you have the reference DOI. Um, and so here it's download magic from DOI with the reference DOI set here. So you could just change this um, string and download it and it does exactly the same thing. Okay, so I see some hands raised. Are you having troubles? Okay, no. Oh, and I should say, every time you run that setup, you overwrite this notebook. So if you wanna make changes and play with this notebook and keep it, then you should under here, under file, make a copy and that will um, make a new copy. It's called um, the same name, but copy. You see here, magic demo copy. Then it won't get overwritten every time you restart this, uh, uh, upload the most recent um, software package. Okay, so let's go to an example that uh, uh, every paleomagnetist loves, equilarianets. Um, and we have a function called ipmag.eq area underscore magic, um, which was written by a couple of us, me and Nick Swanson Heisel mostly. <clears throat> and, um, and this tells you what to do. So it expects an in file name. And the default is the sites.txt file, because it will only, this version of EQ Area Magic will only work on magic formatted files. So uh, if you want to read in our sites file, we would just leave this, um, this is the default. When it's specified here, that's the default. The directory path is, is the current working directory, so we'll have to change that because we want it to be example one um, and um, and so here are all the defaults up here uh, you'll notice that some things like save plots is true uh, the default file format is SVG these things you can um, you can change um, as you like so here I'm going to do that this here uh, with a very simple thing, I'm going to read in the sites.txt file because that's the default. But I have to tell it which directory path, what is the path to that file. And we set the directory path up here, you can see. Um, and so if you've run that cell, it's already set. If you haven't, you should uh, run that cell because <laughs> you won't have any data. And uh, so this sets the directory path to magic example one. And I'm call setting save plots to false. If it's set to true, you don't see the plot. It just saves it to your desktop. So let's just try this. Um, and it made a, a, an equal area projection of the Golan Heights data of Nicole Bahar and a bunch of us. 
And you can see a couple of paleomagnetists are gonna immediately see, oh, there's two groups here, there's one group here. Hmm. And so you can start doing science right away. Now, if I set save plots to true, what it does, it doesn't save it to your desktop. I'm sorry, I misspoke. It saved it to this examples file. So we can go to that. We go back to this directory, and now I've got all the files that I just created, I just downloaded from Magic, and this one, all Golan Heights um, in geographic coordinates, equal area dot SVG. So this is an SVG file. I can check it and download it to my desktop. And um, so that's how that works. Now you might not like SVG file format, maybe you want a PNG file format. Um, and so I can change that to uh, format equals PNG. And, um, and so now it'll save it as a PNG file. So I go back here, and you see now there's both of these. And I can download that to my uh, desktop um, downloads file. OK, is everybody with me now? Yeah? If you're having troubles, raise your hand. OK, um, so now we'll, let's just make a, a map of VGPs. So I'm going to use this function VGP map underscore magic, which reads in um, uh, the magic formatted sites file. By default, it can read in any of them, but it has to have uh, columns VGP lat, VGP lon. So that's in the sites table, if you've constructed it correctly. So this is similar. It sets the directory path, the default results file, um, and um, and so on. And so I'm going to read, I'm going to uh, do this for real. Here's the directory path set again, and um, I can customize this plot with size adjusts the size of the data points. Flip equals true. The default is false. If I set it to true, it takes the reverse, the southerly poles and flips them to the northerly pole. Uh, and, um, and save plots by default is false. Of course, you can set it to true the same way we did before. And um, this lat underscore zero sets the zero meridian for this orthographic projection. So it's um, the, the, the latitude 60 is the center of the plot. And that just adjusts, you can adjust the, the parameters of the, the way that this orthographic projection looks. This R sim is for the reverse symbols, our little blue triangles. So those are all the reverse data, the normal, data poles were, um, were these uh, red circles by default, and the reverse uh, symbol size is 50. So these things can all be changed. So if I click Run, it does makes this plot. Um, if you want to play with the central uh, the uh, latitude, you can do it like this. That's not very helpful, probably, because you can't see anything. So you just want to set this to something where you can see the data. If you want to make different kinds of maps, there's lots of mapping options, but this is a quickie VGP map. Um, there's lots of things you can customize here, but not everything. Um, so, uh, so now you noticed, if you were paying attention, you noticed that there were two groups of data. Reverse data were felt, seemed to fall in two groups. So it might not pass a, a reversal test. There are many uh, options for reversals tests in PMAGPI. I happen to like mine, the bootstrap reversal test. 
And so we're going to do that here. We set the directory path. Um, it'll and we set the input file name as the directory path plus our sites.txt file. And you can see this is a pandas um, function. PD stands for pandas. Uh, and we're going to read in a text file. The separation is, uh, uh, is a tab, so that the separator is a tab. And the header is in the second row. So we skip the first row, and Python always counts from zero. So that's header equals number one equals one. Um, this, this is the syntax for reading in all magic formatted files. They all work like this. Now, in this, so I can read this, and I can show you what we're doing in a little more detail. Um, so a, a pandas data frame is like a spreadsheet. So this is what's in the data frame. It has, these are all the columns that are in the magic file that we just read in. Um, and you can see the column headers and, um, and this is just a standard site table. Uh, so the declination data are in a field called uh, dir underscore dec. The inclination data are in dir underscore inc. And, um, and so I can make an array of those by saying my data frame, my key, the, the header, and the, the column header, and dot values. And that turns it into, uh, we can see what it turns it into here. So it's an array that has all the declinations. And then if I call ipmag under, uh, dot reversals underscore test underscore bootstrap, tell it where the declinations are, what the inclinations are. And um, if I plot the, the stereo net, it'll plot the stereo net. So here's the stereo net. Remember we said that these look like they were two groups. And then if you look in um, the bootstrap cumulative distribution functions of the X component, Y component, Z component, the red and the blue, you can see that the, the um, X and Z components are significantly different from one another. So this would fail the reversals test. Um, so another useful thing is to make a sitemap. Uh, and we can use this more generic plot map function from PMAC Plotlib. It, with increased functionality comes increased complexity. So we have keys. Uh, we can choose any one of these um, projections. Um, so, like for example, Lambert conformable, Mercator, Malwide, orthographic, et cetera, et cetera. So there's all these uh, UTM. There's a lot of um, options for projections for the map. Uh, you can specify the minimum lat, uh, ma minimum and maximum latitude and longitude, and your central latitude and longitude. You can specify what symbols you want to use. And um, I'm not going to go into all these things. You can read them later. So these are keys to a dictionary called opts. And the dictionary, these are the defaults. So if you don't like any of these defaults, then you can change them. So for example, mall wide is the default projection. This default symbol is a red circle. Um, and so on and so forth. So here in this example, I want to change some of these defaults. I want a Lambert conformal projection. So I set projection proj opt proj to be LCC, which is Lambert conformal. You can see that up here. Um, I wanted to set the symbol to red stars. I wanted to uh, set the symbol size to 100. That's pretty big. Um, 
the, I wanted to put on the grid uh, information. So I said plot grid true. Here are the lat long um, maxima and minima, what I want there. Um, this tells me what spacing for the grid. So this will be one degree spacing. And I would like to plot on the coasts, please, the oceans and the countries. And I'm going to keep the default colors, land color bisque, ocean color azure. And, um, and here we go. So then we just call plot map uh, with a figure number, which it's just one in this case, um, lats and lawns, where I read in the data file up here. Here's my uh, data file that I read in, which is the same one that I read in before. And um, longitude information in the MAGIC database site table is LON, LON, latitude is LAT, LAT. So this gives me two arrays, one for the longitudes, one for the latitudes. And so I just put those in here, LATs, LONs, and our OPTS uh, dictionary. So here's the plot that you can make. All right. You can download it. You can do whatever you like, change the colors with it. So this is a versatile but complicated plotting program and um, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> so now we're going to go on to exercise two unless there's any questions. Does anybody have any questions? Nope. Okay. So exercise two is a geomagnetic um, themed exercise. So we're going to learn how to calculate the uh, geocentric axial dipole inclination for a particular latitude. For example, San Diego, where we all wish we were, is um, uh, the latitude is 33. And, um, and we're going to use these two functions to get values from the International Geomagnetic uh, Reference Field for some location. We can make a plot for, of declination, inclination, and field for a range of dates. And we can also make these beautiful um, global field maps uh, for a specific date or make a movie for the last thousand years or actually 10,000 years using um, one, one of the many models of Kathy Constable. I've just chosen one of her most recent ones, CalS 10K.2, but there are other options um, in IGRF.py. So I said we wanted to first calculate the GAD inclination at a particular latitude. We use this function pmag.pink, P-I-N-C for paleo inclination. And you can see here, it calculates the paleo inclination from a latitude using the dipole formula. So all we have to do is give it the latitude and it will give us the um, dipole inclination at that latitude. Now IGRF is um, a, another one of these very complicated programs but has, gives you a lot of power. Um, it gives you the declination, inclination, and intensity <clears throat> from the IGRF model. Um, and this one goes up to not quite 2020. There's a little bug I need to fix, but 2019.9 uh, works. <laughs> um, so I'm using the most recent IGRF model um, downloadable from here. There's also other models. So um, the other models are these ARC 3K, CALS 3K, PFM 9K, HFM 10K, da 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 da. There's also the option. So um, I add these as I come across them. Um, GUFM 1 is embedded in it. So anything between 1600 and, and uh, 1900 will be the GUFM model. You can also use your own, build your own model. Uh, if you have the LMGH, so 1030,000H, um, um, and um, 
and and read that in and make a map of that. So he, here is an example of how this works. Uh, you get local field at using ipmag.igrf, and it gives you the the date. You tell it the date you want uh, the the latitude and longitude and um, the um, the elevation um, and so you need date altitude latitude longitude to supply to igrf to calculate the date so here i'm setting those values the date latitude longitude altitude so 2019 33 minus 117 that's san diego and at sea level and then um, I, I, this passes back an array of uh, the declination, inclination, and intensity for that location and date. And then IGRF underscore print formats it for nice printing. So if you were curious what was in, what was passed back, you can just type local and it will tell you what was returned. And you can see it's this array of, uh, declination, uh, of declination, inclination, and intensity in nanotesla. And, um, and that's not very pretty to look at. So uh, Nick Swans and Heisel made this nice formatter, and it, and it prints it out for you nicely. Um, so in the next case, I want to show you how to use this function to make a time series, a prediction from that model for um, the last 10,000 years uh, for San Diego. So how do I make this? You see here's declination varying about zero. Um, inclination also, uh, well, varying about the GAD field. <clears throat> and intensity in, in this case, microtesla um, in San Diego predicted for this, this time interval. So we set mod model to the model that we want, set the latitude, longitude, altitude to the values that we want. So this is for San Diego at sea level. This is the... Um, expected inclination at that site. So I'm using pmag.pink that I already showed you. Um, the dates, minus 8,000 to 2050, these are in um, before common era, common era. And um, because of the way that, uh, that Python works, this creates a list of dates from minus 8,000 up to 25th, not up to, but not including this end number at 50 year intervals. And you can change that uh, as you like. Um, I, this is a container to put the local vectors into. And then this is a for loop that steps through the dates, calls IGRF, um, and packs it and loads it into this container that we built up here. So this just takes the output and sticks it into this, uh, this list. Uh, then here, I'm making it into a pandas data frame, which if you don't know what that is, never mind, take my class, which I'll tell you about later. Um, uh, this took the local vectors uh, as our data frame and then attached these columns to it. So when I run this, I can show you what um, data frame looks like. So this is what we just made. It has a column, a date, declination, inclination, the the field strength in nanotesla, and we converted it to microtesla. So let me show you where we did that. Uh, so here is where we created the data frame. 
with these columns. Um, and here I created a new column named B underscore UT for micro Tesla uh, by multiplying the nano Teslas by 10 to the minus three. So um, this line takes all of those records that have declinations less than zero or more, uh, it takes declinations that are greater than 180 and subtracts 360 from them so that now my data go uh, around zero. So that instead of having 350, I have minus 10. And that's nicer for plotting. Then here we make a figure object using uh, pan, uh, matplotlib's figure um, function. And these make three things to plot things on. So they're called axes in matplotlib. Here I'm plotting the, the declination against date. So this is the x value, this is the y value. And, and, I, and that plotted this. Then I put on an h, a horizontal black line that was dotted at zero, and that did that. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> and that got plotted on this first plot. The second plot, um, uh, is the inclination against date. So this one, and then I put on as a dotted black line, the GAD ink value. Do, 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 do. And, um, and you can see inclination flopping around the expected direction. And then we plot intensity against date, same way. So this is micro Tesla here. Here um, I can I set the Y label for plot one, the Y label for plot two. And here I should probably uh, put on that this is in micro Tesla, shouldn't I? So I'm going to do that. It uses, um, it uses LaTeX syntax. So now that will put on, um, change the label. See, and now it says micro, and I forgot the Tesla. So T, micro Tesla. Okay, so now I promised to show you how to make these lovely, what I call balloon diagrams, the, um, a map of, I'll show you where we're going, just to tease you. See how pretty that is. Um, so there's this function in PMAC plotlib called plot underscore mag underscore map, and it does what it says. It makes a magnetic map. It uh, has a number of default set. Um, and you can change those defaults if you like. But so uh, first we have to get some data to plot. And so I'm going to use uh, do mag map to do that. It, it uh, generates um, the basic data sets that can be plotted on plot mag map. So do mag map gets you the data or plot, plot mag map do mag map gets you the data and plot mag map. I should have put this as do mag map up here. Oh, I did that here. I just have this twice. I'm sorry. Um, so this is do mag map. I give it the date mod, the model I want, the longitude, the central longitude, the alt altitude. And if you want to use your own file instead of a model, you can set this. Right now, I've set that to a blank string. So we're going to use Kathy's model again. We're going to do make a, a plot for um, 2019. And so if I click on this, it takes a while, but it'll go all over the world, evaluate the field at all over the world, and send back um, lists of declinations, inclinations, intensities, um, and radial intensities, longitudes, and latitudes that get plotted on. These uh, 
get stuffed into plot magmap. Um, and you can see here, I want to plot the intensities on figure one. And I give it the intensities, the lawns, the lats, uh, and what this um, is, it's B. So you, you have some choices of element type. So B, B, R, I, or D. Uh, so that's set here. That's the element type. This C map is a color map. And I set the color map um, to be um, somewhere. Oh, the color map is jet. There are many, many color maps. So you can hunt around. Cool warm is the default. I like jet. The other people like, but many, there's many, many color maps. So you can check here for color maps that you might like better than jet. I'm just fond of jet. So I set this variable name cmap equals jet here. That's where you would change it. And then you just uh, tell plot magmap what color map you want to use if you don't like cool warm. The date, um, the projection, I like these mall wide uh, projections. And I'm not going to put contours on this one. And when I click on this, it creates this. You can see it's got total field strength in micro Tesla for 2019. It has um, the range of values from 15 micro Tesla up to 69 micro Tesla. You can see here, this is the South Atlantic anomaly. And I call this the Gaia plot because it looks like Gaia in a bikini. Then um, the um, plot mag map, uh, for the inclinations here, I'd like to put on the contours. And so here, this is what you get out when you click on that. Uh, it's got the contour lines and uh, you don't have to have them. You can set this to false. And here's declinations. And those um, have to be done really as a mercator because um, Malwai just blows up if you try to do declinations. Um, so we can do this as a function of age, which means that we could make a movie of the field. And in this case, I'm not going to run this because it takes a while. But what it does is it uh, first uh, sets the directory to example two. Um, it deletes all of the existing PNG files. That's what this part does. It sets the model, the line zero, as we did before. Um, and it gives a title. And, um, and it increments the figure number so that we don't overwrite um, the, the figure every time. So we get, a, so what we'll end up with is a series of PNG files for each date. So you can imagine if you, if you make this very uh, tight age increment here, you can change this number to 50 if you want, and then it'll take forever. But you'll have all these things. Um, and so this is the last one that we created. Um, Actually, it's the first one, um, and you can see all of them. This, I just did it very crude, just as an illustration, so it won't take all day. And here, I've shown you how to build uh, a GIF, an animated GIF out of it. So it takes the file names from your um, directory, and it, Appends it reads them in with um, a function called image IO, which we imported at the very top here. There's image IO got imported. Um, and one of the things that it does is it formats our GI, our, our PNG files, um, and then it this allows a delay. If you don't put this in, the, the animated GIF just goes 
and it's very fast. You can't see what's really going on. So I made it slower. It's 0.2 second delay between frames or 0.3 second delay between frames. And then it saves um, your animated GIF as a, you can tell it what to call it. It has to be a .gif. Um, and here's what we just did. We just made this thing. Now for your viewing pleasure, I did this at a much tighter uh, frame. Um, and here you can see uh, it growing. So if it's going up to the present, you can see the we're now at a thousand years, a thousand AD. Um, and here we come up to the South Atlantic Anomaly view. Did you see that? Boom. So you can make this movie and entertain your friends. Any, uh, any questions so far? I don't see any hands raised. Okay. Um, thank you, Wape. Um, so now I'll go to the last exercise in the last few minutes here. Um, it's a, it's one where I'm using the, the data file from this paper that I wrote in 2015 um, that did anisotropy data and uh, comparing it to the natural gamma radiation data from the shipboard. And this is all contained within the magic file. The non-magnetic data are in something called um, uh, external um, underscore uh, data. And so here I've got the data set. I'm unpacking it just like we did before. Um, and here's a figure. So basically, the first thing I wanted to do was to plot the inclination data as a function of depth. And, um, and I'm getting to this with a time scale to the left and um, the uh, time scale picks to the right. So how did I make that plot? Um, first, I read in the data files. I set the directory path to example three. The depth interval that I'm interested in is 40 to 160 core depth. And um, this is reading in the measurement data, which were unpacked up there. This has all the data from the shipboard and the, and the local data. The site information, um, the specimens, the ages, and you can look in those files um, by downloading them to your desktop and looking at them with Excel if you want to. They're in magic format. Um, so first I want to pick out the ages, only the paleomagnetic ages, so that the method code for the ages has PMAG in it and not all the other biostratigraphic things. Um, so this is a way of filtering Pandas data frames that I find very powerful. So it, it basically selects from this ages data frame all those method codes that contain this string. So now that's what we've got in ages. Um, measurements drops, this command drops all of the things that did not have a treatment field step specified because I want only those data that. Uh, were demagnetized to 20 milliteslas on the ship. This is from IODP, who's uh, 318, Expedition 318. So I want the, treat, the 20 millitesla, but since everything's in Tesla, it's 0.02 Tesla demagnetization step filtered out. Um, and I, I uh, need to uh, attach the core depth information, which is stored at the site table to the specimen table. So I need to make a common key here. So I'm just saying that the site 
in this data frame is the same as the specimen name and the same thing for the specimen table the site is the same as the specimen name then i can read in the uh, depth information which is in the sites table so i read in the sites table up here into the site data frame and i just want the site and the core depth and not all the other stuff that's in there um, and then i can merge the depth information from the site table onto the measurements and the specimens table. So the specimens have principal components from AFD magnetized actual discrete specimens, whereas the measurements table has um, all the shipboard of you, um, whole core data. So here I've attached depth to the specimen data frame and to the measurements data frame. I want to filter these <coughs> so that they are they only contain the depth that I'm interested in. This is also a pandas filtering option. So I want the specimen data frame to only have data whose core depth is greater than the minimum and less than the maximum. And I want um, the ages uh, tie points to be to be now age table has tie point height not depth so it has negative numbers in there because height is negative in a drill core so it's a thing it's a feature of the age depth, uh, the age model um, anyway this is just filtering for the tie point the interval of interest and then um, I'm making a latitude um, getting a list actually i'm getting the latitude of the site so that i can calculate the expected inclination at that site so this that's what this does it takes a unique list and just takes the first latitude in that data frame now this makes my figure object and this is similar to before um, it makes uh, i want to have one row and three columns in my plot. So that's what this does. It adds the subplot, the first one. And, and then this plots, this calls a function called pmagplotlib.plot underscore ts, which is the thing that makes this beautiful figure here. It uses the, the time scale that you specified. There's a couple of options, but I'm using the GTS 12, the, the Gradstein at all, geological time scale 2012 from Gradstein at all here, because um, that's sort of the standard now. And, uh, and so this made that first plot here. And then I'm going to make a new figure object for the second column in which I plot the the inclinations as a function of core depth as blue circles with black rims. And I want to make them um, semi transparent. So alpha sets the transparency from one to totally opaque, zero, you can't see it. So this makes it a little bit transparent. Then um, I plot the specimen, in the, the, uh, PCAs from the discrete samples here as red triangles with black rims, and that made this plot. So you can see I've got these blue circles and the red triangles with black rims. In this case, the shipboard, the uh, whole core data really agree pretty well, except for in certain intervals with the discrete sample data. And it's a, a lovely magstrat, you will all agree from very, very far south, <laughs> right under the uh, geomagnetic um, pole. Uh, and so this would be the GAD ink and um, is plotted as green uh, lines that are dashed, that are vertical. This is how you make a vertical line in, in Matplotlib. And then the title of inclinations and um, 
labels the tie points. And there you have it. I guess I'm running out of time, I'm sorry. Um, this will make a plot of anisotropy data, my favorite plot, it's called, I call it the Christmas tree plot. These are the eigenvalues. These are the, the directions of, this is the inclination uh, of the minimum axis. This is the declination of the maximum axis. This is the bulk susceptibility. So you can make plots like that with any depth plot. And then these external results, I put all the data uh, from the natural gamma radiation, um, which is this, onto this plot. And you can see already the high anisotropy intervals are associated with high natural gamma radiation, which is associated with the clay layers, as opposed to the other intervals, which are diatomaceous ooze. So you can see the lithology here and how it ties to the anisotropy. And in here, you can see how this is done. It's a little more complicated than some things um, because we have to peel out the anisotropy data uh, from the column, which is an ISO underscore V1, which has the eigenvalue and eigenvector for the principal eigenvalue, eigen, eigenvalue, so this is the large one, V1. And I just put the depth on the same way we did before. And so we can get tau one, tau two, tau three out of these by splitting this colon delimited list of data for the principal eigenvector. It's uh, their colon, so you split on the colon, expand it out, take the first value, and that gives you the eigenvalue. If you want the eigenvectors, then um, it's um, uh, you would take the the declination is the the second one or one here, and um, so this makes lists of the eigenvalues. And this reads in the external results. External results is also a colon delimited list of what kind of data it is, colon, the data, colon, and the DOI, where the data came from. So you can go look in the site table for this and look under uh, NGR. You can look under external results and you'll see that. Now I've just taken the value of the external result and put it into something called NGR. And so here I plot the anisotropy uh, data, and here I plot the NGR data. And I've done this cool thing with using fill between, which gives me the dark, darkened um, curve when I have high um, NGR, meaning more clay. So that's um, just a sum of what you can do. I wanted to uh, show you to some of the other notebooks that we have. Um, we have a notebook which you should read first, this PMAGPI introduction. There's the IODP whole template, not very interesting to most of you probably. Um, this shows you how to work with magic data within a, a Python notebook, and this illustrates most of the plots and analyses that we have. So I'll just uh, quickly give you a tour of what we've got. You can explore these on your own. Um, because this might take a while to load, everybody's on right at the same time. But if you see a plot here that you like, it shows you how to do it. And you can see that there's a lot of plots uh, options. Um, and um, um, so I invite you to explore those uh, with PMAGPI. I also want to tell you, if you're interested in learning about Python, I'm teaching a class on Python um, starting in a couple of weeks. So if you're interested in participating, please email me and I'll try to make that happen. Um, thank you. Because if you learn Python, then um, you can you can start contributing to PMAGPI. So if you see something that you really like in there, you could write it yourself and contribute it, and that would be wonderful. So I'm going to stop recording now.
Bye-bye.